Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Matthew 15 verses 8. Matthew 15 verses 8. Now let's begin from verse 1. <laughs> it will be more interesting. Scribes and Pharisees came to Jesus and they asked him, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? This is them asking, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Why do they transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. As hard as that might be, it happened that some people had a problem. Now, I wish, let me first reveal to you the spirit at work here. The spirit at work is not men who are really troubled that Jesus' disciples were not washing hands. No. The spirit here was uh, of men who were made up to find Jesus wrong. You understand, when you are dealing with a Pharisee and a scribe, you're dealing with people who are made up to make or to prove Jesus wrong, regardless of whether he's right or wrong. I don't know whether I'm making sense. If somebody can make up their mind to, to say somebody's wrong, and you know there are people who want you to be wrong. You know there are people, you, you can be wrong, but there are people who in this world are born to want to see you wrong. You understand? There are people in this world who will never admit that you're right about them, even if you're right. When Jesus died, you will realize that some people were convinced that they had crucified the man truly to be crucified. But if you will imagine for a moment at what level it gets uh, where a man has to choose between a thief and a healing person, and a man chooses a thief to come back to society, the same men took that madman into prison because they knew that the man was a thief and a murderer. But they put a man who has healed the sick, cleansed the lepers, raised the dead, and done miracle signs and wonders. And they tell him, choose between a man who heals the sick, casts out devils, and a man who kills, and a man who destroys, a man who uh, is a thief. Choose between the two. Choose between the man who will break through your house at night and kill your two children and take your TV set versus the man who will do the miracle. You say, I know. Let the guy come and kill us. Eh? So you see what I'm saying? As crazy as it might sound, it happened. Now, see, if, if you were there, you'll say, ah, me, I can't do it. But you see, the people who did it, what were they thinking? They were functioning under another spirit. It was deception. So that same spirit comes to Jesus Christ, and my Lord, and asks the question, why do your disciples eat without washing their hands? It was sin, I think, that the disciples were eating without washing their hands. And they are actually clear. They are saying they are breaking the traditions of the elders. Okay? And the next verse says, But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Why do you transgress? And the next verse says, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. And the verse says, But you also, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And the Bible says, And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the command. Some of you might not get it. Give me NLT. NLT. Why do your disciples disobey? our old age tradition. They demanded they ignore our tradition of ceremonial hand washing before they eat. And the next verse says, 
why do you, by your traditions, violate the direct commandments of God? Because these are commandments of men. Now, let's talk about the commandments of God. And the next verse says, for instance, God says, honor your father and mother, and anyone who speaks disrespectfully of your father or mother must be put to death. Okay? But you say, it is all right for people to say to their parents, sorry, I can't help you, for I have vowed to give to God what I would have given to you. Okay? And the next verse says, in this way you say that they don't need to honor their parents, and so you cancel the word of God for the sake of your own tradition. You see? Now, the next verse says, you hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, for he wrote, listen, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce or deception or false. For they teach the man-made ideas as commands of God. The KJV says they teach the doctrines of men as of God. They teach for doctrines the commandments of men. They get the ideas of men and then they teach them as commandments of God. Now let's touch something very uh, important there. Very, very important there. They have a problem with the disciples of Jesus breaking the traditions of men. But they don't have a revelation of even the commandments of God, which they break every day. Are we clear? But they are more knowledgeable about the traditions of men than they are in the commandments of God. It's like when you find a Christian who knows more about culture than the doctrine of the gospel. That thing beats me, but it happens all the time. But that's okay. So he says, a man's heart is far away from me because he beholds and worships with his lips but without his heart in the worship. And because of that, the Bible says they teach the doctrines of men as the commandment of God. You see what I'm saying? In fact, if you go in the verses below, you will realize he now corrects them and says, no, it's not what enters a man that defiles him, but that which cometh out of the mouth of a man is what, what? defiles him. Now, that was a revelation the disciples of Jesus knew. They knew that even if I don't wash my hands, it's not what enters me that makes me sick. It's what comes out of me. I'm not saying don't wash your hands. You see what I'm saying? But Jesus was trying to show these guys, look, it's not the germs in your hands that enter your mouth that make you sick. It's what comes out of your mouth that defiles you. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that might be as hard as can, and some of you might not appreciate it because you grew up in an environment where they tell you, wash your hands before eating. Some of you are naturally dirty. You've gotten a scripture where with you're not going to wash your hands again. And if you're that kind of person, I warn you, wash your hands before eating. You understand what I'm saying? But if you don't wash them, don't feel judged. You understand what I'm saying? It depends on your level of what? I know people wash their hands, but they have food poisoning, and they're sick, you see? <laughs> and I know mad men who eat in garbage beans, and they're healthy. So I'm not saying don't wash your hands. Uh-uh. Banani. You know people, there's other people here. <laughs> some people here, certain way, someone can say, ah. Oh. And somebody gets them to eat until the Bible says, it's not what enters you, that defiles you, but what comes out of you, shakatala. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Don't stumble people. Praise the Lord Jesus. Don't what? Stumble people. Don't stumble people like that. But there's something I want to touch that is very, very sensitive. The place where traditions of men become stronger than the traditions of God, even in the church of Jesus Christ, that men would rather obey the traditions of men over the traditions of God. And that makes the word of God void of its power. How many of you know that? And he says that they are worshipping with their lips, but their hearts are very far from me. And how do I know that? When you check their doctrines, their doctrines are of men than they are of God. Now let me touch something that I've seen in the church of Jesus Christ. You imitate us as we imitate Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
You imitate your pastors as they imitate Jesus. Even though you submitted to me, I did not die for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I did not shed my blood for your sins. I'm not the propitiation of your sins. I'm not the one taking you to heaven. I am just an available vessel that the Lord is using because I have a covenant with him. I'm his child too like you are. But your salvation is based on faith in Jesus, not man. Are you hearing me? There is a borderline between men who are deceived into rebellion and men who are true and might appear like they're rebellious. You understand what I'm saying? I'll give you an example in a normal church setting. Church authority, submission. Some of you do submit to different churches. Some of you are not submitted. You're free, which is okay. <laughs> Fly until you grow. But there is a problem that is creeping up in the body of Christ unawares. And the apostle in me, eh? the apostolic in me, can tell the difference between these lights. And it's starting to become a burden in my spirit. Every time I see the course of men and how certain people treat submission. You understand what I'm saying? Let me give you an example. I am your spiritual father, for example. And I tell you, go do this. Do it. See what I'm saying? But what am I telling you? Does it move in the true teaching of the gospel? I'm your spiritual father. I've told you go and steal money from Rita. You see what I'm saying? Then you say, I'm not going to steal money from Rita because it, the Bible refuses me to steal money from Rita. Then I say, I, when I, your spiritual father, speaks, whether I am right or wrong, when I tell you to go and steal money from Rita, go and steal it. Are you listening to me? Then someone goes and says, I am submitted. Then you steal money from? The Bible says both of you will be destroyed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I can open in Scripture where the Bible says, do not steal. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Do not steal. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? You have the right to come to me and tell me, my father, much as you've asked me to do this, don't say no. If you don't agree, eh? I tell you, don't just walk and not do. Be found to be accountable before God. Because this is offense between you and your pastor. Ask him. The Bible teaches this, but you're telling me this. Are we contradicting scripture or are we walking in truth? Now, he has the right to convince you scripturally. Or you have the right to convince you scripturally. But if I hush you and I say, ah, uh-uh, me when I speak, I have what? Spoken. I do I say it can't steal. Money, I am your father. Are you following me? We shall both perish in this. Because you have known to do right. And you are simply following my course because I told you to do it. I must love God as a man of God enough to say that I can only have men to me to serve even as they've submitted themselves unto God. The pastor Zach must have the freedom to say, you've instructed me in this, but I'm not agreeable because this is what the scripture teaches. It is wrong for pastor Zach to simply keep quiet because he'll be demanded of my blood. You remember the scripture? That if a man goes wrong, go to him. Correct him because if anything happens to him, God will say, but you knew the difference. Did you approach this person to tell them that this is the right way to do things? Or sub- submit it humbly. He's not going to come and say, ah, now you see, you call yourself a pastor. I refuse to listen to this nonsense. Hey, I have crossed. I'm going to start my own church. No. Are you hearing me? He has to come and say, this one I've not understood. You told me to do this, but when I read the Bible here, it doesn't go with that. 
Let's talk about it. If I'm a man of God, I'll tell him, oh, you're right, don't do it. You see what I'm saying? If I insist and say, I insist to do it, he has the right to say no and tell me up square and say, hey, much as I love you, I'm not going to go against the truth. Because remember, I submitted to you because you submit to Christ. I didn't submit to you without Christ. Now we have people who have introduced traditions in the body of Christ. And they call them the commandments of your spiritual father. When your spiritual father says, don't talk to Pastor Zach, don't talk to him. But why? He has to give me reasons. You get my point? Oh, I don't agree with you talking to Pastor Zach because he's this and that and that and that. That's okay. I will not touch as long as I see that he has a point in that. And I know I'm going on very dangerous terrain because people who are rebellious take advantage to rebel against spiritual authority when you tell them you can do anything. There's a thin line between rebelling and obeying. You know, sometimes in the ministry we have people who are rebellious. But for them they use such things as opportunity. Ah, kakati. What do you mean mukama wata gami? You know some of you there is a way you also behave. Me, the Lord spoke to me, but apostle told me this. I think me God spoke to me. No. If God spoke to you contrary, submit it. Don't order. Don't impose it. Submit it. You get the difference? Don't impose it. Submit it and say, in my most humble submission, Musei, this is what I see. But if you get to a point and you see that even in your humble submission, you feel you're right. You have the right not to do it. Somewhere, God will judge the two of you. If your father is right, he'll correct him. If you're the one who is not right, you're in trouble. Of course. You understand what I'm saying? That is why we are teaching. So that men know the truth. They might come to the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth. You see, some people are only in knowledge. Knowledge. No. The Bible says that you might come to the knowledge of the truth. So, the church and the body of Christ, the gospel, is not just about dispelling knowledge. Because there is knowledge that does not profit. There is knowledge that does not build. There is knowledge that does not edify. Don't think that every man who walks on that pulpit and speaks every Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, uh, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, knows what they're speaking about. There are people who have sat under certain ministries for many years and nothing has changed about them. Yes, every day they are receiving knowledge, but they're not receiving truth. Are you hearing me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me give you one typical example. Jesus is counterattacking with a deeper truth to verse men's tradition because the men who invented these traditions knew lesser truths. You see what I'm saying? And Jesus comes with a deeper truth and he says, this is why I am doing what I am doing. You see what I'm saying? Because not what enters them defiles them, but what comes out of them. Are you reading me, child of God? Now, look at a typical example. The Bible says, if a brother wrongs you, who is this brother? X, go to him. Are you listening to me? Go to him. If he fails, get another one and go as two. If he fails, the scripture says, bring a sad witness because you're seeking to establish truth. That is for the testimony of two or three witnesses. Everybody established, right? Two or three witnesses. Now, he says, if he will not hear thee, then take thee one or two more. Then in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established because you'll say, when Apostle Emma wronged me, I came to him first. Then after coming to him, I got Pastor Sam and I came to him. Then after coming to Pastor Sam, I got Pastor Zach over the same issue. And now he's my witness. And on that line, the Bible says, and if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. But if you neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee a heathen and a man and a publican. You see? Then after that, you can say that I got three witnesses. Stand here. Let the three stand and say, Pastor Sam, stand here. Pastor Zach, stand here. Pastor Modesta, stand here. These are my three witnesses. Which can represent the fact that I spoke to this man and he refused to change? The church now has the right 
Now, if you looked at the scripture, if he neglect to hear the church, that means even now the church has an opinion to say, brother, is it true that these three spoke to you? In some instances, because not everybody is mature to handle judgment, we involve the inner leadership, which represents a core group of the church, which is more than three or four. For example, I can get the elders, and I say, Mama Bukenya, Musei Bukenya, Mama Lois, uh, the Modestas who aren't there, the Pastor Brandon, because these ones can handle this matter. If I put it on a baby who just came two weeks ago, they might not understand. Here there is an assumption that every man in that church is as mature to judge. But in a general congregation like this, not everyone is as mature to judge spiritual matters. And some of you have not even the wisdom not to exercise yourselves in matters higher than you. Are you listening to me? I can come to these pastors. The rest weren't there. Okay? And I say, you were there, you were there, you were there, you were there. And they say, okay, now, as according to the pastoral group or the inner circle, representing the church, is this true? Yes. What is wrong with you? He refuses. Treat him as a heathen. How do they treat heathens? Who can tell me how heathens are treated? According to scripture. Okay, what did Jesus do to the heathen and the publicans? He preached to them. Open the Bible to him afresh like he's a baby and tell him, Munange, common sense. You're not supposed to be lying. That's how we treat heathens and, and what? And publicans. You understand what I'm saying? If he refuses and refuses even that teaching, the Bible says, dust your feet and have nothing to do with him. Have nothing to do with him. Don't make him a center of your Sunday teaching and Tuesday and Wednesday and Monday. Don't make him your sermon. Don't go warning everybody about this public and unheathen. We have released men. I have released men of God. And I know it. And the Lord is my witness. And we sat in twos and threes. And these elders all agreed to release a person. But I have never got a man and put him on my altar because I released him. Never put a man on my altar because I released him. I have never put a man on my altar because I released him. They will know the story. They are my witnesses before God that I do everything as he teaches. There was somebody we dealt with in the ministry. I'll not tell you the name because I'm walking in love. I spoke to the guy, failed to get him, got another pastor, got another two, got the group of the pastors, and I said, this is the issue. You see what I'm saying? And I was clear, and I told him, I'm not chasing you from attending, but I realized I can't help you. I'm not anointed to help you. But there's somebody out there to what? To help you. And I blessed the person. And as long as the Lord liveth, I have never put his issue on my altar. Never. Never. What's my business? If he's a heathen, it's to preach to him and love him. He has the right to say whatever he wants about Apostle Grace. But I cannot defy the God before whom I stand every morning to tell him that I substituted fellowship and my ministry for a little contention with a man who didn't call me to ministry. Are you listening to me? You know why I'm saying these things? Because we used to think they are supposed to be obvious, but they are not obvious. And some of you are growing into ministers. But some of you are going to be judged for nothing. You see what I'm saying? So that's why when somebody brings an issue before me, I ask him, Am I the first to be told? Yes. Before you told me, did you talk to them? No, I did not talk to them. I've just told you what they did to me. <gasps> Call them and talk to them. After talking to them, engage me. I don't care how right you are. Here you're wrong. Because you're getting a second witness without having established a rapport, a form of communication. Are you listening to me? If you come to me and tell me Pastor Sam wronged you, the first question I'll ask you, have you spoken to him? Then you're going to tell me, no. And I'm going to tell you, you know what? Go make peace with him, talk with him. Let him fail then come back to me. Because if you come back to me again and say I spoke to the person and failed to get an answer through, or my church members know me, I'll call the two of you. Because I want you to enter the system. 
Now I'm the first witness. Uh huh. Talk. Then when you get into hearing these two people, you're surprised about how many things are misrepresented. And you're like, wow, the devil began to work on you long ago. And the deception with many people, many of our believers, is they think that people don't know God. Because people are quiet, people don't know God. These people who sit in the congregation, they know God. They just don't speak, but they know God. They know God. You might look at an average lady seated there in her shirt, she's quiet. But when you enter her spirit, you'll be shocked. She has a covenant. She has a relationship and can tell the difference. Already you're judged as a man of God because you have been disqualified for the years you've spent in the gospel, Apostle Grace. You cannot not know this basic. I tell now you're an apostle. You cannot not know this basic truth. And if you come by this spirit, how many more spirits behind you are wrong? Because now you're exposing me into a judgment. If you're not calling me as a witness into a matter, you're asking me to participate in gossip and slander, accusation. What's the translation of the word accuser? Satan. You are inviting me into a satanic discourse. Because you're not calling me as a witness against. No, you are calling me as a part of a gossip and a slanderer. Let me also warn you people who easily listen to cheap talk. Some of you, you literally sit in the seat of scorners, of matters that are way higher than you. You cannot be right in conviction and wrong in process. By the time you're wrong in process, you're as wrong as the one who wronged you. You ask anybody here, anybody in Fenero, nobody brings me gossip. Bring a person. Me, you ask. Does anybody here, you put up your hand, you, me, you bring, oh, me, you bring me gossip. No. no. No, 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 no. I don't entertain gossip. Bring the person. You bring the what? The person. And me, I'm too busy also to sit down. Do you see what I'm saying? And discuss another, how? Do I get my pulpit? Discuss with thing with the depth of the Bible and the mysteries in there, I ignore hypnosis to get on a small little issue. Oh, this one. And that's why I realized some people will never grow. When I say never, capital N-E-V-E-R. Even, you see this someone, it can reach a person and he says they abused me. Because I know some people think they can never understand. That this is not about abuse. Scripture is even profitable for rebuke. Rebuke, it's profitable for rebuke. Do you understand what I'm saying? But a miracle, now this one did to even me. Even me, I'll not talk to him because how could he do this to you? What? He did this, even me, I'm not going. Who, who are you reporting to? You are 30, you're 40, you're 50, you're 70, you're 80. And you're getting a 22-year-old involving him in a matter of someone older than him, mature than him, ahead of him in every way. And you're trusting this young kid to be a judge as a witness. You're exposing an innocent soul. And because also the soul is also innocent and weak in knowledge, it also joins the council. Even me, I'm going to hate. Ah, who are you hated? I'm going to, how can, you understand? Wait a minute. What is happening to the church? I thought this is basic wisdom. Are we going to translate our traditions into doctrine? Are we going to stop fearing God because certain people have opinions? And sometimes there are people you find and you think, no, this one is mature enough to tell the difference. And they shock you that they don't. You're like, eh. Of everything you've read, even you've had this sermon, and you again become Do you understand what I'm saying? Someone wakes up, oh, you come and, and even hate for me, then you understand what I'm saying? And somebody says, oh, I'm a man of God. I spoke to the other person, and the other person also told me that this person is wrong. You're a man of God. You're a man of God. Call the two. If you're a man of God, call the two and say, look, I had a matter on this person, and they said you're this, uh -huh, and you made me a witness. Let's establish this word. You hear rumors, just hear say, and then a man stands on the pulpit and says, now I'm a prophet. I'm telling you. Then you're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
how can you prophesy beyond truth? How can you go beyond truth? How can you go, and then you say you're a prophet. How can you say you are a prophet, and you're going beyond truth? And the Lord told me something, that some people, because he can't judge them, they judge themselves with their own mouth. You see, somebody judges. You remember when David was judging the person who took the only little uh, animal of the poor man, and then yet he had many... Many say that man should be, and then I say, you did the same to Uriah and Beersheba. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes when the devil wants to cause you to judge yourself, he'll put you in the judgment seat to judge another. Never forget that. Never forget that. Sometimes when the devil wants to cause you to judge yourself, he will put you in the judgment seat to judge another. And the moment you judge another... Everything that you have said, the Bible says with your own mouth, you are judged. But you know not. Why? Because you sentence a man, yet you're sentencing yourself. And it shall be. Do you understand what I'm saying? Who is making sense of what I'm saying? Bring the second witness. So, why didn't you call this person? No. I'm not going to call him. Oh, why didn't you call him? <laughs> it's up to him to come. No, okay. How will he come on rumor? You want somebody to just also reveal a rumor. I had a rumor that you were annoyed. And then, I, I had a rumor that you're not happy with me. Uh -huh. He bases on rumor. Then you say, no, I didn't say anything. Why? By the time I come to you on rumor, we've already lost the principle here. Because I was not supposed to come to you because you told brother so and so. I was supposed to come to you because you called me to discuss issues. He said, oh, I spoke to that sister. Many times I spoke to that sister. Get us one witness. None. Get us two witnesses. None. Get us three witnesses. Who was there in that presence? None. But I spoke with who? Now, if I bring an issue, you have to ask me questions too. I don't know where I'm making sense. Hold me accountable to the word I'm preaching too. Because it's supreme above me. Otherwise, now, we've made ourselves gods of men. And instead of honor, we are scaring men into submission. If you don't do this, I'll curse you. You will see. The Lord will come. Lightning from heaven will smite you. Why? Because your spiritual father said, and then you refuse. <laughs> you understand? We are scaring people into submission. We are scaring people into service. You understand? There is no honor and love anymore. Some people now are engaging in uh, that cheap rumors and anger. Some little young boys are, sis, girls get emotional. Oh, I mean, how can he? And then you see little boys also fighting things. They don't even have a clue. A, a clue. And you're like, hey, I also thought you hear God. You don't hear God? You see what I'm saying? Have you ever had me defend myself before any man, about a man of God, and someone is accusing me of defending myself? About a man of God. Have you ever heard me that a man of God has attacked Grace Rivega and I'm defending myself? He's lying, I didn't. Have you ever heard me say that nonsense? I cannot. Because I'm a man of God. Me, I don't have words like some people. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't have anger like some people. I don't have what they call proof like some people. I don't have them palanirakos like some people. No. No, no, no. Me, I have God. He's enough. Have you ever gotten to a point where you have to say, no, let my righteousness answer for me. I am sure the Lord cannot hand me over to the will of my enemies. I am sure. Because my conscience is clear before him. If you come, you are going to fall upon so grace because I have to convince you and tell you who I am and who I am not. You're in the wrong place. Follow me because the Lord told you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, ah, nah, this one, you know, let me go to, to, to this one. Ah, nah, no, this one, I tell this one is very bad. Let me go to this one. Well, why are you vacillating between two, three or four opinions? You're double-minded. Don't follow a man because you want to follow him or because he seems right and talks wrong or because he talks right. and No, no. Follow a man because the Lord told you to follow him. Period. Do you understand what I'm saying? But why am I trying to bring some sanity in the body of Christ? It is because sometimes I worry about the future where men are building ministries on rumor 
cheap talk, gossip, slander. Kugamba, for you the Bible closed to you. The Bible for you closed to you. All you have is to attack and then fight. You see some of these guys on radio. They go on radio and attack fellow ministers the whole service. That's how they build their ministry. They go on television and attack fellow ministries the whole service. Then may I get the mystery I say, ah, Grace, on Thursday, preach about the depth of the knowledge of Christ. Now people come. Kumanga, people got tired of those mad things. You understand? I don't want to enter your battles. Story is a monday And some people can't get it that people don't come to hear battles. People don't come to hear wars. No, people come because they want to know Jesus Christ dead and resurrected. People come because they are heavy. They are hungry for the presence of God. They want to know what is the fellowship of the suffering. What? Well, they want to conform to that death and see resurrected power. They want to apprehend that which Christ apprehended them for. They took their transport from home because they want to have to walk in the truth of eternal life, to know the one true God. And this only son Jesus. That's why people come. Some ask, why does Fanero grow? Very simple. Njiri. 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 I've had some pastors, like some guy one time wrote on the internet, he took my members. I said, when I, wait. I took your members. Wait, 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 wait. If I've ever come to you and I told you, leave your church and follow me, put up your hand. Nobody. You see what I'm saying? Now, some guy was writing, uh, some man wrote on the internet, then you, you preach, then you do all these things, then a young man comes and takes your people. <laughs> what shocked me, listen, what shocked me was, he used the word your, I said, wait, 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 wait. When do people become yours? Because now, there are two things about, about this. One, I want you to understand, this is the church of Jesus Christ. It's not your church. We don't own people. We don't own people. Auntie Mukati, some of you are building your own ministries and the kingdoms. Eh? You're building your own companies and business companies. We don't own people. We don't own people. No, no, no. When the Bible says, thine people shall be willing in thine day of power, it means the Lord commits people to us, but he owns them. We have people committed into our care, but we don't own people. People are not a pain who they stole my pain. No. When you tell somebody that they have been stolen, you mean to say they don't have a brain, they don't have a soul, they don't have a spirit. You are the only one who has it. And the person who steals. You see what I'm saying? You can't say why with that one he, he stole people. You 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 have a brain, you have the Holy Spirit, you speak in tongues, you're led of the Holy Ghost, and they stole you. Even you steal. Okay, thou shalt not steal. Okay. <laughs> Some guy wrote on the internet many years ago, about three or four years ago. I saw it on the internet, I was shocked that they still now the people who come, me I do know them. Me I don't know where you even came from. No, because they don't introduce themselves when they come. No, you just see a guy seated there and I'm a call. <laughs> they don't say that I'm this person and you have stolen me from. No. You just see faces coming and they are what? But why do we think that the people who listen to us are like property, they like pens? Why do we think they're like shoes which you can steal and money? Why do we think they don't have a brain? That they don't have the Holy Spirit. That they don't understand God. Let me tell you, there are people who have left Fanero. And I know they've made a mistake. You understand? Yeah, you know. Because some of them even later you hear the problems they go through. And you know this one left where the Lord had placed them. Why am I leaving Fanero? Because even the other person told me to. My friend is leaving. Even me, I'm leaving. Did God call both of you? If God has called me under a covering, you go. Me, I'll stay where God has stationed me because there's going to be a point where they won't ask both of us. Uh -uh. They will ask me personally. God will ask me 
We are not even going to die on the same day. <laughs> Am I making sense? Eh? You know, some of you have gotten into a place of pleasing men and not pleasing God. Men have become gods and God has become a man to some people that he can lie. Let God be true and every man a liar. Don't set yourself against divine truth to please a man. Don't ever set yourself against the truth of God to please a man. Have an independent spirit to know that this one is wrong. I cannot. Let me tell you. <laughs> one time, many years ago, a man of God told me to do something very wrong. A man of God. Many years ago. Many, many years ago. You know, hey, let's do this. You know? I looked at the fellow. And I, I went in my bed and I thought. And I thought. And I thought. And the Lord told me, look, choose. Just choose. We can't waste time over this. You see what I'm saying? The next time I came to the man of God and I told him, sir, I love you. I honor you. But I will not go against the course of the God who called me because I love you. Here, this is where we make decisions to say, accept me that I've said no in humility. You understand what I'm saying? Because now, I see that now we, and, and that's the thing about religious leader. You know, there's a difference between a religious leader and a spiritual father. <laughs> you know, there's a big difference between a religious leader and the spiritual father. There's a difference. The Bible speaks of them and it says that they close the door for others to come in. They themselves, they don't go in. Someone refuses to embrace truth and he refuses others also to embrace truth. And you see people destroyed because of a shepherd. If I get to a course and you see I'm off the course, I don't care how deep I am. Come to me and tell me, Mosei, I don't agree here. We'll open scripture and agree. If we don't agree and I see that you won't agree, I'll call a third person and say, they are just here. Are we right? That's what they call humbling yourself. Some people think that because people account to me, I'm not accountable to them. No. I am accountable to you too. Of course, you'll not back at me and say, no, no, no. But you'll come in here. There's an issue. Let's really talk about it in truth, in the gospel. And if I'm a man of God, I must value the word of God above myself. Otherwise, some people have inflated their egos above truth. But a man would rather cause another one to do what is exactly wrong, totally wrong according to truth, just to satisfy his wounded ego. But now, uh, these people were misleading. Jesus died for. We didn't shed blood for them. Why am I warning you people who are in future going to become ministers? Hmm? We have grown up, by the way, this is typical of the church in Africa. How many of you agree? Or how many have seen these things in churches? Put up, don't ya. Don't repeat those things. Tell your neighbor, don't repeat those things. We don't repeat them. We don't. Wait, what happened to forgiveness? If you're forgiven, why? Let me tell you, there are people who have hurt me. But I can never betray them. I cannot. Because I know by the time I prove that they are wrong to another person, now, uh -huh, where is restoration? I've also gossiped and what? So I swallow my humble pill and cook the beef and eat it alone with my Coca-Cola. That's what they mean to let things over to God. Because vengeance is of the Lord. How many battles are you going to fight in this world? For you, you are born a fighter. You are fighting everybody who comes your way. Everywhere you go, you want to fight and win. Everywhere you go, you want to fight and win. Because you have a mouth that can speak. And you think that because people are quiet, they don't answer you. They are foolish. No, they are not foolish. They are just letting other people to judge the matter. You know there are people, I told people, there are always going to be people who hear men who don't talk. They are people who hear men who don't talk. But for them, when you keep quiet, they can read within the lines and get your story. 
That's why a man of God should never defend his position before men. Never do it. Even the apostles and Jesus, if you realize, they only defended themselves when they were put before councils by force. But you never had Jesus on one day on a boat explaining to his disciples, you know, they say I killed, yet I didn't kill. They say, Moshman, I blessed them. Can you believe they say, no. The one who calls you knows you. You might look at me here and you think, you know, Apostle Grace. Now you don't know me. But the one who called me, what? And I know myself. Do you understand what I'm saying? You get where I'm coming from? So, don't ever substitute tradition for truth. Don't ever do it. Man-made ideas as the gospel. Don't ever. Don't ever. Don't ever. The reason why I'm warning you is this. Eh? I have been praying for some people. And the Lord was telling me, there are people who are going to be destroyed because of being misled. They are innocent souls. But they don't even know their way. They know how not to go in or go out. There are still infants that desire milk. But the challenge is that when you continue that way, you will be destroyed too in the process. If you value life that it's worth more, grow up. Praise the Lord Jesus. And that is why I tell people, all the manifest meetings, Fanero meetings, school of ministry, Fanero, we don't fight men. And we are not going to fight men. Let that be clear. Tell your neighbor, we don't fight men. And we are not going to fight men. Our altars shall not be places of debating who is right and who is wrong. Mugambe, tell your neighbor. Our altars, will, they will not be defiled by bitterness. Now many are defiled by that bitterness. And some people are judged in the process. And they hit shipwreck. They become broke and everything gets stuck in their lives and they don't even know why they are stuck. They carry burdens heavier than they can carry. Their spirits are heavy. They no longer hear God. Even when they pray, they are hitting the roof and coming back. They've literally frustrated the spirit of prayer and grace on their lives. Nothing seems to move. Why? Because bitterness is in your spirit. You literally lock heaven because of the spirit of bitterness on your life. Some people don't even hear God anymore. If you ask some people, the last time they really felt the spirit of God sweeping over their lives, it's amazing. Because they are bitter in their spirit. Let me tell you. Even if somebody came and split Fanero in two halves, I know how to find God. Because I found him before. I know where he is. I can't take you from their course to say, but this one split. What was I doing if they split? What was I doing? How can my own which are willing live because they are mine? How can what is yours live? It's not possible. It's like, let me tell you, like the people who have submitted to me, I know them. That even if you take them to the best preacher in the world, they'll still come back and say, Apostle oh, Somesla. You get my point? Because even if you walk in the air and the make butterflies float, you'll do your miracles and land Burundi and they tell you Apostle Grace. You, you get my point? Because they have grown. They know who they are. They know what they learn. Somebody made me laugh. He said, Apostle, there was a pastor who had a big ministry, but all the girls in his ministry, all of them wanted to marry him. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. And when, when he started the ministry, they left. All of them left. Now, what I will advise you is, eh? he started advising me on how to make sure that when I marry, they don't leave. I said, man of God. Man of God. 
man of God, you have offended. And he asks me why. I told him, Fanero is not like that church you are talking about. He said, why? I told him. Watch when I marry. Fanero will continue increasing. And I will remind you that Fanero does not grow by women. No, it grows by the Holy Ghost. It's not what makes people throw away clutches. It's not what makes people play their CDs and words of life. It is not what makes people read devotionals every morning. Not every woman who reads devotionals has a crush on Apostle Grace. No. Some people came because they want Jesus Christ. And whether he marries or not, they still want Jesus Christ. They are married to the gospel. And I let him watch. How can they, how can they make you that cheap? Uh -uh. How can they assume you are that cheap? But you go in the rain just for a man. You sit on the desk just for a man. Some people think marriage is the end of it all. Neither. There are people who in the ministry, you know, are single. They are not searching and they are happy and they are serving. Temutukoya. They are not complaining because Jesus covered a certain place in their lives. Kari, I agree that there are some churches where girls go for men of God. It's not in Fanero. It is not here. I tell you, it's not here. Let them watch. Let them watch. Because you mean to say that every woman who comes to Fanero has a crush on? Every woman? Never fumbo. Many people have demons. People have demon spirits. One of those ones who get married every Thursday. I think next year it's going to be her. It's going to be deeper. But never got a homo. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why? Because some people think that that's how the gospel is. Is. And we are going to prove them wrong. Let them watch. Let them what? Watch this stage. Praise the Lord Jesus. Oh, some people got Fanero because they are nice lights. Brother, we didn't. We didn't begin in lights. Some people think Mufanero is because I don't want her. You know, like a certain man of God who came and told me, you know, for you, what has built your ministry's partners. I laughed. I laughed. I told him, brother, I wish you were there. I, I wish you were there. I wish you were there. When the partners we had were only giving 1,000 shillings. <laughs> and then you look at your expense and it does not meet the income. Now you believe God. Fanero is not built by partners. No, 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 no. Partners are simply responding to Fanero. But it is not, they don't build it. They are responding. This is men saying we are blessed. They're not the ones who build it. No. This is men saying we are what? We are blessed. And we have to bless what blesses us. Fanero is built by Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. By the aid of the Holy Ghost. In the revelation of God the Father. That is the foundation. The Lord has granted me one thing in this life. And I've mentioned it before. I have always shocked men. Where men think I am is not where I'm at. And my age is even more interesting. Because if I say, you're Apostle Chris. No, you look younger. I say, ah, exactly. <laughs> That's what they call Fanero. People doing things beyond their age, beyond their ability, beyond their education status, beyond their connections, beyond their networks. You know, recently I stood on a certain pulpit one day and I said, You know, some of you, you need to tell when God is doing something on a man. 
You need to know when the hand of the Lord is on someone. You can't raise a hand on a man who has God on him. Agakatonda, you will not win. You cannot win. I have never fought any man, even whom I don't agree with. I have my reasons. Because I don't know at what stage they are with with God. Kakati, if I enter a thing and then and I can't come out, how can I exchange manifest and fanero for a kachip? <laughs> Bantam with a fellow. You understand what I'm saying? Tell somebody to pull in. <laughs> you know, ethic and divine, eh? you know, that's a pignosis of things ethic and divine. Now I was teaching about Christian ethics. You know, some of you, you want to know the depth, the five dimensions of the spirit, the eight dimensions of how to know, the 16 dimensions of, of designing. One time I saw a guy who was, he made some people, the guy says there are 60 levels of speaking in tongues. I knew he was lying. <laughs> you know, when you're an apostle, you can see through. I said, let me first listen. He spoke of five, six, seven, and I said, eh, this brother is lost. But he was sure there are 60 levels. I said, But you spoke five and like three were the same. I said, <laughs> it's like somebody teaches about the dimensions of the spirit. Like one time I had some guy, he taught about the dimensions of the spirit. He spoke up to 14. And then when I looked at them, to me they were two. I couldn't get it. The man is in 14 dimensions. But me, when I get all of the dimensions, they are two. He's in the second. This is the second. But he has split the <laughs> <laughs> do you realize that I've never preached about beyond, I never preached beyond the fifth dimension I've never I don't I, this is something I can share with these pastors but I've never spoken beyond I usually go into the fifth and return because I know many of you can't too much for you you're lasting in the flesh to know it <laughs> but you don't have the purpose of it some of you don't know by the way that everything you're receiving comes with a responsibility. We are pumping you every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Thursday, every Friday. And then you go back home pump. The Lord demands. The Lord demands. There's a guy who came to Fanero. He started listening to the gospel. He told me, why did you ask us for 10? With this kind of gospel apostle, why did you ask us for 10 people? Ah, ah, ah. Uh-uh. Apostle, not 10. Then I must bring 50. And the dude is running his number. Why is he in 21? Are you serious? Because the guy said, I know too much. Too much. When Botswana recently, they brought me a man who was literally dying. Literally dying. And Bishop Didi sent me a message and told me, this guy who really was sick, eh? you could see he was sick. HIV was very sick. And he told me, Apostle, we've taken that man to hospitals until he got tired of being pricked. They can't find HIV in the man's blood. Kakati. We are talking about an anointing that can get HIV out of a man's bloodstream. What can it do to your family? What can it do to your ministry? You who is listening to me now, what can it do to you in your business? What can it do in your career? Do you understand what I'm saying? If you can't leave a virus in the body, you know, some, we are going to show men another way. Some of you were there on Thursday. A woman just threw a clutch and walked. Kukamba, simplicity. Every time me I see the anointing, and I see a demonstration that is powerful. I direct it to my knee. I say, Father, like it has gone into this bone. Because the anointing just changes function. But it's the same. When he enters your pocket, he makes you rich. When he enters your body, he gets cancer out. When he enters your family, he reconciles. When he enters your business, it expands. When he sits in Fanero, the chairs fill. You see, you just direct this. Like when you hear, like I've said, somebody was healed of HIV. Immediately, tokareka, 
don't just say amen. No. Do you remember the story? The Bible says when they were testifying of the coming of Jesus and what was going to happen, many were marveled at the things of Jesus, but Mary kept these things to their heart. The moment you hear that somebody got healed of cancer, oh, it's like, there's a carry to start. Direct it. Say, God, look. Speak a language that will tell God the next time it shall be me laying hands on this HIV guy. And he must heal. He must heal. Then he told me, there's a lady you told, you know, she had failed to get married, relationship had failed. I told her, oh, so you have been released, you're going to get married. In the least expected way. You know those women are praying for were married to demon spirit. Tell me you are in Botswana. And he told me, an unbelievable man. Unbelievable. She's, he said, oh, but now, I wish I show you. Don't, don't I have the WhatsApp? One lady you told that she should wait. She'll be married by a decent guy. And this girl is going to come miraculous, right? And as I speak this weekend, they are paying bright price. She's getting married, listen, to a very rich fellow. Everyone is so shocked. And she told me she thought you were joking. Me, by the way, me, even when I talk jokingly, I prophesy. I don't need to. No, no. It will be like this thing. I am joking. Nenga, there is somebody who has taken it. In the name of Jesus. Let me tell you. I've gotten to a level where certain things come out of me. I don't speak them. They just come out. From the prophetic utterance on my spirit. They just come out. So when you're in the presence of a man of God like me, there are others like that. Be careful even when I joke. Be very careful even when I joke. I can threat you what they are. I can threat you what in a joking one and say, ah, he's joking, he's some kind of force of God. No. Men of God don't joke. Yeah, if you don't agree with this, Musumba, have mercy. No, we cancel. We cancel there. <laughs> because that's what the anointing does. Somebody say, man, speak in other tongues. Speak to Jesus. Speak to Jesus. to Jesus. Jesus 
Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for shaping, breaking, bending us, killing us. And if there is any of us that are starting cheap talk, gossip, or slander, help us. And I pray for you that if you've been involved in gossip and slander, against me or the ministry, you're forgiven in the name of Jesus. You're forgiven. And when I want you to know, you're forgiven. Because you knew not now, you know. Father, we thank you because you're helping us, you're bending us. Let our hearts be close to you. Let them not be far to worship you with our lips, but we not with our hearts. Let not men hear us speak and they say, did this man know the gospel? Help us. Just help us. Help us. Help us. And help us to forgive and let go. In Jesus' mighty name. And all things said. Thank you. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.